Welcome everybody. I'm Bill Stray from General Finishes. Thanks for uh, tuning in today. Uh, I'm going to talk to everybody a little bit about uh, dry spray today because we know uh, a lot of you are spraying our products and especially for uh, DIYers or contractors, professionals that are maybe a little bit new to spraying our products, especially with HVLP sprayers. Uh, provides uh, some unique challenges and, uh, and one of them being if, uh, if we have too much air, not enough fluid, and, and you end up with not enough product going down and end up with kind of a, a dry, dusty spray going on that, that uh, material that you're working with. So we're going to talk about how to fix that today and, uh, and some tips and tricks. So the, there are really three problems when it comes to dry spray or three causes, and they really are all related to each other. Um, the, the first cause is going to be if you have product that's too thick. Uh, the second cause would be if you have too much air coming in, or the third cause would be environmental factors. So uh, dealing with the, the first issue of product that's too thick um, and, and not enough product coming out of the gun. So we've got a few different uh, guns here that I'm going to show you. Um, these are our pressurized cup guns, and what, uh, what I mean by that is these cups, you can see they have an air hose going to them. And this air hose allows this canister to be pressurized by the, uh, the turbine unit that's blowing air out of the gun. So uh, what that does is it helps move fluid out of the gun. It's a, a really useful little, uh, little trick that these guns use. Uh, whereas if you have other guns that don't have that, uh, like this one here, you can see there's no air adjust or air hose going into this uh, canister. Basically what happens here is you put the fluid in the top and it just runs out through the gun. Well, there's nothing forcing that fluid out. So if your fluid is really thin, these guns are really great. But if you get just a little bit thicker fluid, then this becomes a real challenge. So um, this is why we prefer using something like these pressurized cups here. Um, now, the viscosity of the fluid, the thickness, is going to come into play along with this. So these two guns here, this, uh, this little Earl X 5500 unit is kind of a beginner unit. Uh, Semi-pro, if, if you're getting into doing a lot of spraying, you need something with just a, a little bit more power than this. But this puts out about 2.2 PSI. Uh, and, and to give you a comparison, a uh, larger unit like these uh, Apollo units, uh, Fuji units, uh, both great partners of ours, uh, these put out anywhere from 5 to 10 PSI, depending on which unit you're using. So um, obviously 2.2 to up to 10 PSI, I can spray a lot thicker product out of this uh, without really having to change much. So um, you really have to assess what kind of equipment you have and what product you're spraying to be able to get the best results. One of the tools that most every spray gun manufacturer is going to give you uh, is this little measuring cup. And this is called a uh, Ford number four cup. So what these are made for is to measure how thick the fluid is that you are spraying. And this is always a really good starting point uh, to be able to know how to set up your gun. So uh, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna dip this into our finish and try not to make too big of a mess doing it. I'm gonna submerge it completely in there. And then I'm going to count, once I start pulling it out of here, I'm gonna count how long it takes for that fluid to go from a solid stream to breaking. And it's gonna take a little bit here, so, uh, so bear with me, because we're about a quarter of the way done here. We're almost 15 seconds in. So once we measure when that fluid starts to break, we go to something like these charts here. And we're gonna give you these charts to access when we are done as PDFs, or uh, they're pretty easy to find. You can Google these charts and, uh, and it'll give you a better idea here. But we're pretty close to getting that stream to break. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on this here. You can see it's getting thinner. And gonna be right about there. So we're at about 45 seconds, okay? And, and this cup is always a little bit of an estimate as well. Um, this isn't an, an end all be all, because like I said, each gun is gonna be a little bit different with the settings. But if we go onto these charts here, and uh, again, we've got Fuji and Apollo in their, their charts. Uh, so we went 45 seconds here. So we look in here and 45 seconds is gonna get us somewhere in the 1.8 millimeter tip. Uh, maybe even uh, in the 1.5 says it's up to 37 seconds. Uh, we could still work with a 1.5 and be successful. So that's actually what I have in, uh, in, this, 
and this gun here is a 1.5 tip. So again, we're gonna make these accessible, but you wanna use that as a, as a really good guide. And what happens if you're using a tip that's too small, I have a, a 1.0 millimeter tip in this gun right here. And I actually have our milk paint in here, and this is undiluted milk paint. And I did this intentionally because I know this is going to be too thick to really come out of this gun really well. So I'm gonna turn this on, we're gonna make a little bit of noise here, and I'm gonna show you, I've got this needle all the way open. So I'm, I'm spraying out as much fluid as I can out of this tip. And we're gonna see just how much comes out. All right. So it's loading up into the gun right now. So that's a, a little bit of an extreme example of, uh, of what we would see in dry spray, but you get the concept of there's just not enough fluid coming out of there to put down a nice uniform coating, okay? Um, now part of this is that, that little bit of splattering that you're seeing is because that product is pretty thick and there's, there's not enough power in this little unit to, to handle atomizing that, but you still see there's not enough fluid coming out. So um, that's one of the really big things that, that we make sure everybody should have the right tip size. And for milk paint out of this unit, that might be, this is a 1.5 we've got here. They also sell a 2.0 millimeter tip. One of those is gonna be much better than a, a 1.0, okay? Uh, so always wanna make sure that your equipment is set up with, uh, with the right size tip and, and that you're giving yourself the best chance for success. Um, and again, these pressurized cups can make a big difference as well. The other thing I wanna show you here we have most of our guns converted over, and this is, uh, this is really the same gun, a little different model, but uh, we have this, uh, what's called the 3M PPS cup system here. And you can, uh, you can replace any canister with this system. And, uh, and what it is, uh, it's, a, it's a plastic cup here, and then this hose pushes air in there. And when I take this apart, you're going to see that this is almost like a vacuum bag in here. So this, uh, this has a disposable bag in here, but what happens is inside of there, we have air pressure and eventually it pushes this inside the canister and that fluid starts to shove out of there. So uh, again, if, if you have a thicker product and, uh, and you use something like this, it's gonna be able to push that fluid out better. So again, you wanna know your equipment and make sure that your equipment, the, the viscosity of the product that you use and everything works together. So once we get our equipment figured out, as far as the, the fluid size, or the fluid tip and the, uh, and the product viscosity, the next step is to make sure that we're not using too much air. And I'm switching over to this Apollo unit here because we're gonna be able to push a lot more air out of here. Uh, this pushes out at least double the amount of air than this Erlex does here. So if you're working in, with, a, uh, with a sprayer, and you don't have enough fluid coming out and or you have too much air, uh, what's gonna happen is it's basically gonna dry coming out of the gun and go on kind of like dust instead of going on like a fluid like we want to. And that's what I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna get this guy out of the way. So I'm gonna start, I don't have much fluid coming out of here at all. I'm gonna start with a lot of air coming out and you're gonna see when I spray it on there that it's gonna go on almost dry and, uh, and it's not gonna give us the results that we want. So again, we're gonna make a little bit of noise here, so bear with us. All right. So I think uh, hopefully you can see in the reflection here a little bit that uh, that product is really almost dry to the touch. There's not much there. Left a little fingerprint there, but it's, it's gonna be dry in just a couple of minutes here. There's not enough product going down and there's way too much air, okay? So when you have too much air, uh, you either need to dial the air back and or get a little bit closer to the, the surface that you're working on. Uh, the, the reason that we like using these HVLP guns, high volume, low pressure, is because they don't use too much air and it's a lot more efficient. You don't waste so much product. 
So what we're going to do here, and you can keep it focused right on here, is I'm going to turn the air down and, uh, and make sure we have enough fluid coming out. And we're going to see a, a lot different results when I do that. So I'm turning the air down. All right. I'm going to open up that fluid just a little bit. Okay. So now what we're going to see here, if I do that same test with my finger, you're going to see that there's a lot more product down there and it's laid down a lot more smoothly. Okay, so that's the, the Goldilocks zone of the amount of product that we want down, where we want it going down wet. We obviously don't want too much where it's dripping and running all over the place, but that's a nice smooth finish on there that's absolutely perfect. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So the right amount of air the right amount of fluid going down. Those, those work hand in hand. Uh, now, if you are working in an environment that, uh, that might be a little bit warm or a little bit dry, uh, that, that always presents some unique issues. So uh, one product that we do have here that is really useful, especially if you're at high altitudes, if you're working in heat, uh, is, is called Extender. And this can be added to any of our water-based products. All right, top coats, paints, any of our water-based products, this is going to help slow down the dry time in warm and uh, in dry environments. Okay, it's really critical. So you can take this, and if you're working in Denver, for example, in, in 85 degrees in the summertime and there's no humidity, um, you can take this and you can add, uh, we say, up to 5% to any of our products. So 5% in a quart would be roughly an ounce and a half. So that would be a, a scoop and a half of this right here. Okay, so for for a gallon, we'd be talking up, uh, up to about six, seven ounces of, uh, of material. So it doesn't take much extender to make a really big difference in how this product applies. All right? You can also use this to thin down product. So uh, before we were talking about fluid tips that are too small and product that's too thick, if, if you're stuck with a fluid tip that's too small and don't have another one, and say you're spraying something relatively thick like milk paint and you need to thin it down, you could use extender to do that. And, and then you can spray the milk paint through a little smaller tip and, and have a lot of success. This is, uh, this is something that everybody should have. Uh, this is a really inexpensive product to have and it's gonna save a lot of energy, uh, whether you're working with product that's too thick or you're working in an environment that's too dry. Now, if you're trying to spray on a 95 degree day out in the sun on a surface that gets a lot of sun and might be up at 100, 120 degrees, uh, you're, you're gonna struggle to be successful. So you do need to take conditions into account when you are spraying product. Uh, and, and sometimes you just have to work with what, what mother nature gives you. So if you're working on an outside front door, garage door, you wanna work in the morning when it's out of the sun and, uh, and when this finish is gonna work correctly. So some really important things, but dry spray really is uh, again, an element of not enough product going down, too much air uh, and or environmental conditions. So uh, addressing any one or combination of those three is gonna give you great results. Uh, we always welcome feedback and questions on our Facebook page, on our website. Uh, we appreciate everybody watching, uh, generalfinishes.com, and uh, thank you for showing up today.